Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Dale Jarhead here, and I've got a question for you. Are power stations right for you? And if so, which one? And if not, well then what? So let's talk about that. We've all seen the hurricanes in the southeast and big fires in the west taking out power. And of course, you know, you got tornado alley and thunderstorms and all kinds of crazy stuff that take out power. And I think a lot of people looking for power stations are just looking for a way to extend the amount of time they can do things at home when the power goes out, particularly keeping the fridge and the freezer running, maybe running a coffee pot, some lights, charging up their cell phone, possibly even running a TV or something with maybe a little internet. Maybe you wanna watch a movie or something. So what power station would work to provide that for you? Well, today I'm gonna to talk about some options that you might not have considered, and hopefully I can help you make a better decision into which power station you might wanna get, or at the end of this, I'm gonna give you some options that might actually be not just better, but possibly even less pricey. So let's get into it. The first thing I gotta ask you is how much power do you need? If you're just looking to go camping and you have to use a CPAP, then you know a 500 to 1000 watt hour power station is gonna do you just fine. But that's not really what we're talking about, is it? We're really looking at what do I need if the power goes out at my house so that I can keep some things running and maybe keep my cell phone and things like that powered up because we're in an electronic connected world today. And I think a lot of people wanna at least be able to maybe watch a movie or play some games or at least have some lights on and run a coffee pot. So let's dig into it and see what you would need in that kind of a scenario. The average refrigerator with a freezer, apparently, at least according to the research I've done, uses about 1,429 watt hours per day. Next up would be a freezer. Maybe you've got a chest freezer. You got a bunch of steaks in there that you'd like to barbecue up someday and you don't want them thawing on you because the power's out, right? Well, how much does a freezer use? Well, they use just over a thousand watt hours per day on average. Now, if you wanna watch TV, the typical LED TV in the 55 to 70 inch range runs between 120 and 200 watts while it's running. So if we kind of take the average and figure, well, you're gonna watch maybe a two hour movie in the evening when the power's out, well, you could throw out an average of say 300 watt hours in order for that to run. Now, if you're gonna use internet so that you can watch a movie off the internet and you've got Starlink, you probably need to add another 200 watt hours to that, taking that up to 500 watt hours to run your TV and internet to watch a movie. So if we're doing the math, we've got 1400 plus watt hours for the refrigerator, 1000 for the freezer, we've got 500 for the TV and the internet, so we're already up to 3000 watt hours. And if you're using LED lights and that kind of stuff, well, you're probably only gonna use those for about a half a dozen hours in the evening, and, and if you only use about three of them and they're nine watt lights, you could figure you're gonna use about 200 watt hours to run those lights. So if we say, well, I'm gonna use a little more power, maybe I'm gonna run a coffee pot, charge my phones, whatever. If we add another, say, 1,000 watt hours per day to do that, that takes us up to about 4,200 watt hours per day, 24 hour period to keep things going when the power's out. So let's take a look at some power stations that I just gobbled together, power stations that I personally know with one exception, and let's see if they can provide that for you. I'm going to do this from the most expensive power station to the least expensive based on price per watt hour. The one that was the most expensive that I looked at was the EcoFlow Delta II. Now the EcoFlow Delta II with one additional battery, which takes it up to four kilowatt hours, was $2,099. Now that's like 4,096 watt hours and that came in at a total of about 51 cents per watt hour. And you're gonna see that that's actually really expensive. But let's take that 51 cents per watt hour that's on their 4,000 watt hour system. That's the EcoFlow 2 with the extra battery. You can actually add one more to get six kilowatts. But of course, that's gonna bump your price up. It does have a 1,000 watt solar input. So at four kilowatts with a 1,000 watt input, you're going to need more than four hours of good sun to get that thing fully charged after 24 hours. So if you deplete it to zero in 24 hours, it's taking more than four hours to get it fully charged up. That thousand watt solar input is limiting. Of course, you could fire up a generator or something like that. So you could take four or five hours and condense that a little bit with a generator or a DC car charger, as well as your solar panels and get it charged back up to 100%. You would have to do that every day. 
All right, next up is one of my favorite power stations, actually, and that is the Commvault Victory 4000. Now, it's got a 4,006 watt hour battery, and it comes in around 45 cents per watt hour. So it's a little bit less expensive than the EcoFlow, and they both have right about four kilowatts of power. The Commvault, however, and I think because it's really built for the RV overlanding industry, only has a 400 watt solar input, and that's just not enough. I, you know, it would take 10 hours of perfect sun to get it charged up with sun. However, they do provide you with a DC car charger that is a 500 watt charger, so you could plug it into your car. But we're gonna talk about that unit here a little bit later because there are some options you might wanna consider. Now you can add their six kilowatt battery to it, taking it up to 10 kilowatt hours, which is gonna give you two and a half days. But that of course is also gonna make it a lot more expensive, just like the EcoFlow. Now coming in at 36 cents per watt hour is the Opus Mega One with two two kilowatt batteries added to it for a total of just over 5,000 watt hours. Now that's gonna get you more than a day, but the Opus Mega One, which is one of my favorite power stations too, <laughs> actually most of these are because they have different applications, but the Opus Mega One already comes with an 800 watt solar input on the main unit and 2100 watt solar input when you add the batteries. Well, 2100 watts of solar in two and a half to three hours is gonna get that fully charged back up. Number three is the Pecron E1500P with two of their three kilowatt batteries, taking it up over 7,000 watt hours of reserve, almost two days worth of power to run your home. And it ran at kind of a paltry 32 cents per watt hour. <laughs> when you're looking at watt hour prices, you remember the EcoFlow was 51, now we're down to 32. That's pretty good and you're talking seven kilowatts. And that unit runs 2417. So not too bad pricing for seven kilowatts. Now it does only have 800 watts of solar input on the main unit, but apparently each battery adds another 400. I mentioned the Commvault earlier and there's something about that Commvault Victory 4000 that I actually really like and what it is, it's got ports that you could plug a battery directly into that unit, any battery, like a, a LifePo 4, four kilowatt battery that I happen to have, plug it directly into that 120 amp Anderson plug, which then parallels the two batteries and now I'm up to eight kilowatts. Now, yes, that unit only has a 400 watt solar panel, but if I'm running through that 120 amp plug with my four kilowatt battery or batteries, then all I've got to do is put a charge controller on my batteries, and guess what? It's also going to charge the main unit. If configured this way, this one comes in at 30 cents per watt hour. However, are any of those really the best way to go? I mean, maybe if you're in an apartment and you really can't install anything and you have nowhere to put solar panels and you're just gonna hang some foldable panels over the balcony in your apartment, then yeah, one of those power stations is probably gonna be a better option for you. But if you have a house with a yard where you could install some solar panels, then I'm gonna tell you there's a better option that's really truly worth looking at. And I'm gonna give you two examples of this option. So let's talk about the first of the two. That is an EG4 solar kit sold at Signature Solar. It's really worth looking at. EG4 has an excellent reputation. And this system, which comes in at $3,769.13, which works out to just 37 cents per watt hour, which is frankly better than two or three of those power station options that I mentioned. But here's the thing that something like this gets you that's really quite impressive. So you're talking eh, maybe another between $1,000 and $2,000 than some of these power station options. But man, I'm telling you, these are game changers. And if you're looking at trying to survive an outage, especially one that's four or five days, a week or two weeks long, I seriously suggest you take a look at these because they're pretty simple. They're almost power station. The EG4 itself already has all the connections, everything's built in, it's got breakers, it's got all that kind of stuff. And this kit is a 10 kilowatt hour kit. It has a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is a thousand watts more than any of the others I've mentioned already. It can take 5,000 watts of solar input. So you put an array on your roof, or even a, a standing array out in your yard, you can add a massive amount of power, 5,000 watts of solar. If you've got the two batteries that come with this unit for 10 kilowatts, you're looking at two plus hours to get it fully charged up in good sun. But it also has a utility connection. So you can plug your generator in, charge it up, 
get everything back up to snuff pretty quickly, and it's a good charger. Now the next one, coming in at just under $2,600, and an amazing 28 cents per watt hour, is a lead time all-in-one system. If you buy two of their 48 volt, 100 amp hour batteries, and this all-in-one system, you're coming in at under $2,600 or 28 cents per watt hour. That's pretty much the best price out there. And you're talking just under 10 kilowatts of backup power. It has a 3,500 watt pure sine wave inverter, can take in 4,400 watts of solar. It has a utility port as well as a generator port so that you can have them both hooked up to it. If the power goes out and you need to charge up your batteries, you throw your generator on, you get your batteries charged back up, and hey, if you can keep those steaks frozen so that point of time when you want to go out and cook up some steaks on the barbecue because you're cooking outside anyway, well, this would keep those steaks nice and frozen and everything in your fridge cool. They would run your coffee pots. They would do what you need to do in order to survive. Now, I do want to point out these are only examples. These are just the ones that I put together for this video. It doesn't mean that there aren't better options out there or there aren't other options. There are lots of them out there. So there you have it, folks. I hope that helps you out. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer comments. If you got some suggestions or systems that I didn't mention that you feel are worth mentioning, hey, drop it down below. Let me know. I can always learn something new. Meanwhile, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.